Hello everyone and welcome to the 2022 small room setup tour. Before we get stuck into the video, I just wanted to say a huge thank you for the incredible support over the last year. The channel recently passed 50,000 subscribers which is honestly mind blowing, so thank you. But with that said, 97.9% .9 of my viewers aren't subscribed, so if you do enjoy the video please consider subscribing to the channel. Lastly, I'd love to invite you all to join the official Scorpio Tech Discord server which now has over 1,000 members and is a place where we chat about tech, gaming setups, PC builds, gaming and much more, the link for that is down in the description and I really hope to see you there. And now it's time to get started with this setup tour. So a lot of you will remember that this wall was kind of bland last year so there's quite a few changes to take a look at. Starting with the bedside table, that is the IKEA Godicious which is a clean and useful storage unit. One of my personal favourite upgrades is this Dongshin 15 watt 3 in 1 wireless charger, it charges my AirPod Pros which I honestly couldn't live without, the Apple Watch Series 3 with a leather strap from Amazon, and of course the iPhone 11 Pro Max that I'm using to record this video. So I'm showing the old iPhone 6s Plus as a placeholder for now. And next to that we have the 3rd gen Amazon Echo Dot which I use to control all of the lights in my room as you'll see later on. Another absolutely incredible upgrade is the Govi Aura Smart Table Lamp. Govi plays a huge part in my setup for lighting thanks to its reasonable prices and high performance products as well as its fantastic app support. The Aura lamp has a plethora of preset scenes to choose from as well as full control with the DIY mode and of course smart functionality as well. Above that we have another new addition which is the framed Game Boy Pocket from a company called Grid. This is very fitting for me as the device was introduced in the same year I was born. I also stuck the Gamma KK66 on the wall and yeah I don't know why either. In the top drawer I keep things I need easy access to like pens, notebooks, pads, keys, mask, books, the Ridge wallet and a bunch more useful stuff. As many links as I possibly can will be down in the description so if you do want to pick anything up for yourself be sure to check them out. Moving further up the wall we've added the LifeX beam which both frames and provides lighting for the new IKEA Skadis pegboards. I went for two 36 by 56 centimeter boards stacked vertically with a selection of hooks, trays and containers. Over the past year I've taken steps into the world of keyboard building so here I have a selection of keyboard switches for easy access. Above which I have a selection of keyboards which are the Gamma KK86, Varmillo Forest Fairy and the Drop Enter. And my most expensive addition this year is the 2020 MacBook Pro with the M1 chip. Now you may be wondering why I need this, and the short answer is I cannot fit my gaming PC in my backpack. If I'm away from the desk, having the MacBook makes my life much easier. It's a powerhouse when it comes to image and video editing, as well as a speedy way to reply to emails and check on the Discord server. Above that I have my Nikon D3200 camera with a couple of lenses which I use for product photography over on Instagram as well as being a general hobby of mine. I also picked up this new Spider-Man poster which brings me to ask you who is your favourite Spider-Man and why, and also a Back to the Future poster, both of which I got from HMV in the UK. For the lighting around the bed you already know it's got to be Govi. Here I've got a 15 meter strip which offers a great feature set and app control, similarly with the lamp I showed you earlier it can also be controlled with Alexa. Thanks to the 15 meter length I was able to cover under the bed and behind the bed to light up all of the darkest areas within the room. And yes it's that time again, it would not be a Scorpio Tech setup tour without a Sherpa blanket. On a serious note these blankets are incredibly cosy and warming and make those late night gaming sessions that little bit better. I get all of my Sherpa blankets from B&M in the UK for about £10. And with that said it's time to move on to the console gaming area, and by far the largest upgrade this year is the stunning 120Hz 55 inch LG C1 OLED. I'll talk more about that in a moment but first we have the under TV shelving which is the lock and 9 cube unit from B&M in which I've created dedicated zones for my Xbox, Nintendo and Playstation games and controllers. Last year I had a lot of people suggesting to put the Switch in the central cube which I finally got around to doing. This means all the consoles are in one place and all I had to do was put a hole in the back of the unit to run the power and HDMI cables through. For the lighting I'm using these spotlights from Amazon which each require 3 AAA batteries. Unfortunately they do eat through battery life in no time so I'd highly recommend getting yourself some good rechargeables if you decide to pick these up. They also come with this small RGB remote which lets you easily change the colour for each of the lights, I've linked all of this down below. For the Xbox Series X I had to do some DIY to create somewhere for it to sit. I got this old wood and L shaped brackets to support it against the shelving unit and whilst odd I actually quite like how this looks. 
Above that I've got these artificial mini trees from Ikea alongside a Master Chief Funko Pop to represent Team Xbox. In the centre I have the PlayStation Icons lights and on the right thanks to Xbox's recent acquisition of Activision Blizzard I had to get rid of Spyro and replace it with Aloy to represent Team PlayStation. Then on the right side of the unit we have the PlayStation 5 which honestly hasn't had that much use over the last year due to the lack of quality exclusives. And okay okay I won't leave out Nintendo, here you go have a Pikachu Funko Pop. So as I said earlier this is the LG C1 OLED. LED. It was a much needed upgrade over the previous Samsung TV which was limited to 60Hz. The 120Hz capabilities of this TV mean I can get the most out of both the Xbox Series X and PlayStation 5 whilst also having a significantly better experience with its fantastic 4K quality on services such as Netflix, Amazon Prime and Disney+. Plus. I can quite honestly say this TV is an entertainment consumer's dream. Every single time I turn it on I'm blown away with its quality, the webOS is fast and responsive and the ability to change between inputs and applications so quickly makes it an absolute pleasure to use. Gaming on the big screen has never been more enjoyable. Games like Guardians of the Galaxy, No Man's Sky, Back for Blood and Rocket League all run so incredibly well and feel like completely different games than they used to before this TV upgrade. The TV also has a built-in game optimizer mode which changes a bunch of settings and allows you to see what the current FPS is. I believe the LG C1 has 4 HDMI 2.1 ports which support 4K at 120Hz. That means I can have my Xbox, PlayStation, Nintendo Switch and PC all plugged in and capable of the best settings without the hassle of changing cables all the time. I know the new consoles might be lacking games right now but quite honestly they feel so amazing to play. When I compared the Xbox One and PS4 to PC it was an absolute no brainer, but now honestly I enjoy gaming on console just as much as I do on PC, but obviously for different genres of games. Even the Nintendo Switch felt much more pleasurable to play on this TV, there was no weird syncing issues that I had with the old Samsung TV and the whole experience just felt smoother and sharper. And of course the main advantage of the Switch is the grab and go, it's so easy to swap between the handheld and dock modes and makes the whole process practically seamless. As for Netflix and other streaming services, I absolutely cannot complain. With an OLED you don't get any of that halo or bleeding effect you get on standard TVs. This means dark scenes look sharper and better than ever before. The colour accuracy on this TV is also incredible which made watching an animated series like Arcane a truly incredible cinema-like experience. By the way, if you haven't watched Arcane, what are you doing? Not to mention other 4K content such as One Planet with the incredible David Attenborough, I mean look at that detail! And don't forget this is shot through a phone at 1080p, compressed by YouTube and it still looks stunning. It's a whole different thing in person too. And I don't know if anyone here is old enough to remember Crazy Taxi, but even that was an absolute blast to play on this TV with Xbox backwards compatibility. I have the TV paired with the Samsung HWK450 soundbar with subwoofer and honestly this place is like my own personal cinema with a bed. What more could you want? So with the console gaming area out of the way, let's move a step closer to the PC gaming setup. I've got the Skyrim Vista frame poster above the shelves and I've also reduced my Funko Pop collection down but typically have figures from my favourite games such as Skyrim, Fallout, The Witcher, Borderlands and Overwatch. On the lower shelf I have a selection of keyboards which are the RK61 with some resin keycaps from Dwarf Factory, the Varmelo Yakimo which I used for most of 2021 and the beautiful Akko 3087. Next to which is another IKEA Fika hanging artificial plant. Also if you've made it this far please consider subscribing as it will make me like happy and stuff. On top of the PC I've got a custom Xbox Design Lab controller and the awesome Davoom Pixu Max art display and clock which allows you to display and design whatever pixel art you want. Before I forget the shelves are the IKEA Mosslander shelves which are 1.5 meters long, they are installed upside down to allow for better displaying of the keyboards and figures. Next up we have Govi yet again. This is the Govi Glide and it's in my top 3 setup editions for this year. Last year I called it the best setup edition of 2021 and I still stand by that. It's a highly customizable light bar with all of the smart features we know and love from Govi. It has an incredible brightness and vibrancy as well as a load of scenes and customization options to make it fit your theme perfectly. I decided to put it under my shelves with a connector facing downwards to frame my gaming setup and to give that wall some more life. Everything from the installation to the pairing process was incredibly easy and I'd have no problems recommending the Govi Glide to you for your gaming setup or office space. Sticking with Govi yet again, I used another 15 meter Govi RGB smart strip to put around the cubic shelving unit, the TV and the shelves in the top left. All of which is voice controllable, so here it is in action. Alexa, set all of the lights to blue. 
As you can see, this simple voice command changed absolutely everything. All of the Govi products including the RGB strips, Aura lamp and the Govi glide as well as the ceiling lamp, LifeX beam and the nano leaf panels all changed to blue. If you don't have a smart device like Alexa or Google, then the Govi app allows you to easily control and customise all of their products in one place. It's a great app that continues to get better with each update. So here we are at the PC gaming setup. Again, we've got quite a lot to get through, so let's get straight into it. Someone said they could see a cable last year, and well, I took that personally. I upgraded from the Razer Basilisk Mercury to the Logitech G Pro Superlight Wireless Mouse. I absolutely adore this thing and at 63 grams it's incredibly light yet still feels premium. I've paired the mouse with the Carpio 2.0 wrist rest from Delta Hub which greatly reduces the risk of carpal tunnel and fatigue. The keyboard is a custom build with the Gamma K LK67 white base, gator on black switches and drop MT3 Camillo keycaps. The board perfectly fits my setup steam and I couldn't be happier for a first attempt. This mesmerising wrist rest is from a good friend of mine who makes them so if you're interested check out the link down in the description to contact him for more information. I also recently purchased this Lugia keycap from Hero's Art and I absolutely love it. If you couldn't tell, Lugia is my favourite Pokemon, but what is yours? For the desk pad I have this 900x400 blue Hamaji mat which is this awesome blue and white swirling theme which could not be more fitting for my setup and colour scheme. I've also picked up some new pads including this one from Arky Designs called Mountains by Day, the High Star Poly Glide, Space Cowboy from Unspoken Desk Pads and of course last year's Purple Storm from Auramech. This intriguing lamp on the desk is the Yee Light Candela Ambience Lamp which as the name suggests mimics candlelight and makes for a really cosy effect especially when the other lights are off. For headphones I'm using the Bear Dynamic DT990 Pro which are extremely comfortable and have top tier audio quality. I also picked up these super basic headphone hooks to hang the headset on when it's not in use. For desk lighting I've got the BenQ screen bar which is a sleek device that sits on top of the monitors. This light is incredibly useful and honestly a must have for people who spend a lot of time sat at the desk. For the microphone and what you're hearing right now that is the Rode NT USB microphone and I have this sat on a super cheap Inogear mic arm. Having it placed here means I can easily manoeuvre it to a specific location depending on my needs. The monitors are both Asus VG27 AQs which are 165Hz 1440p IPS panels. Since jumping from a 1080p monitor to these I could never go back. The clarity is fantastic whilst not pushing your PC components too hard, it is the perfect middle ground in my opinion. Also did you see these cheeky no scopes? I'm something of a pro gamer I guess. I play a whole bunch of different games on PC, but it is typically shooters and competitive games. I have quite a lot of people asking me why I would want an Xbox or a Playstation when I've got a PC, and the answer is because with a console it's much easier to chill and play relaxed games and single player experiences compared with the competitiveness on a PC. And uh, my game collection may be slightly out of control, it's nearly over 2000 games now. Someone send help. Please. But with that said, I absolutely love these monitors, and having them both configured horizontally allows me to multitask extremely easily and massively increase my productivity and workflow when it comes to video editing and other tasks. Now let's take a look at the custom PC build. Thanks to a whole bunch of Corsair products including the new H100i Capellex Elite in white, 6 QL120 fans, 4 Corsair RGB strips and the Corsair RAM, the entire RGB system is controllable through the IQ software, not to mention the Asus motherboard and GPU which can also be controlled in IQ thanks to an integration. I'll put a full specs list in the description, but I'm running an i9-9900K processor overclocked at 5GHz, an Asus ROG Strix 3080 GPU, 32GB of Corsair Vengeance RGB white RAM, as well as a 1TB Samsung 970 EVO Plus for my Windows 11 OS, and a total of 8TB of SSD storage, meaning I finally got rid of that old and loud HDD. Above the monitors I have the Nanoleaf light panels which have made my setup somewhat recognisable. I did actually add one more additional panel this year to even out the shape so my OCD wasn't kicking in every time I sat down. The desktop is the IKEA Linmon which measures 150 by 75 centimeters which is unfortunately discontinued now and the drawers are the Alex drawers also from IKEA. In the top drawer on the left side I have some additional mice including the Corsair MX50 RGB Ultra Wireless which is a really comfortable and practical mouse. In the second drawer I have most of my handheld consoles including the PS Vita, 3DS and Standard DS as well as their games which almost exclusively consists of Pokemon games. On the right side of the desk in the top drawer I keep my easy to access stuff such as notepads, pens, cable ties, USBs and of course Scorpio Tech stickers. 
In the next drawer down I have a bunch of controllers including this custom Hex Gaming Series X controller with rear buttons which is honestly pretty sick. Oh yeah, and I bought a Stadia, don't ask me why, it was just cheap, you know? In the third drawer down, as it's a bit larger, I've put a bunch of easy to access tools, cable management items, screwdriver sets, batteries, keyboard building supplies, and of course the WOW Stick electric screwdriver. And in the fourth drawer I have some filming equipment such as lighting and sliders, as well as an air duster to clean my PC and consoles, some thermal paste for some reason, and also some screen cleaning fluid and a trusty microfiber cloth. I clean the desk once or twice a week as I hate the dust and dirt, which may sound overkill but it's not the worst trait in the world. As for the rest of the drawers, I have files and folders as well as some items of clothing. Some of you may have noticed I haven't got a wardrobe, which does make life difficult to say the least, but I do thankfully have a small closet outside of my room for storing clothes. For the chair, I'm using the Autonomous Ergo Chair 2, which is a really comfortable and adjustable chair, but it is starting to look a little worn, so I am considering the upgrade to the Ergo Chair Pro in the near future. The monitor stand I use is the Bontech Dual Monitor Arm, and I believe the US version is called the Vivo Dual Monitor Arm. This has been perfectly capable of holding these two 27 inch monitors with no issues, although it has slightly damaged the Linmon desktop. Cable management has been pretty tough, but I've gone for the out of sight, out of mind approach. I've attached the power supplies and power bricks to the back of the desk to keep the cables off the floor, but this is something I can work on in the future. Underneath the desk though, I have used some D-line cable trunking to run various cables across the desk without anything dangling down behind, which makes for an extremely clean looking desk. I'm generally pretty happy with the cable management which I've achieved through lots of planning, cable ties and long enough cables to make management as easy as possible. Another small addition above the light switch is this temperature and humidity monitor which I got from a Gadget Club mystery box. For my everyday bag I use a 28 litre STM Myth which easily holds my MacBook as well as practically everything else I need on the go. I also recently picked up these Nike Air Max 270s which are absolutely beautiful to the point that I'm actually scared to wear them. For those of you that have watched any of my previous tours, you'll be happy to know that I've actually managed to keep some of my greenery alive this year. Well, almost all of it. For the back of the desk and monitors, I also used Govi RGB strips which really brightens up the back wall and gives this setup a lot more life. If you want to build your own setup, I highly recommend planning out what you want the room to look like with various sketches which makes life much easier moving forward. With that said, I think we've finally reached the end of the 2022 setup tour. If you've made it this far, I really appreciate your support, so feel free to ask me any questions in the comments and I'll try my best to get back to you. If you'd like to see more of what I do, check out my social links in the description for my Twitch channel, Instagram page and of course the Discord server for the easiest way to contact me. Putting this video together took a huge effort so I really hope you enjoyed it. If you could drop a like and share it with your friends, that would be amazing. Thank you all so much for watching the video, subscribe if you want to see more tech content throughout the year, and I'll see you all in the next one. Goodbye.